Welcome, everybody, to Diablo Dailies number eight. Let's get this show on the road. Today, we are going to be talking about racks. Next week, we're going to be talking about chest. Um, I believe racks for now, racks though. Thank you, a settler. Racks on racks. Extra racks on racks. On top of racks. It's going to be Don't forget more so racks. many racks. That's right. That's right. There's a lot to discuss today. There's also a lot of stuff that's, uh, oh my god, that is loud. There's also a lot to discuss that I would say is is not exactly um, 100% known or for sure, for certain. Unlike with shrines, with shrines we had a little bit more knowledge. With racks, our knowledge is a little bit more... Uh, Testy, right? We had to kind of test and, and see and figure stuff out along the way. And um, that can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes that can be difficult, right? That can be difficult sometimes. So, with that being said, with that being said, we are going to uh, jump in and have a little fun. Let's see if we have our... What is that being captured? What the heck? I don't know what that window capture is. Oh, that was from that was from yesterday. First things first, I hope you guys are collecting some poison facets. I really want to see if we can get a little uh, group of poison facets by by the end of um, the week. You know, I really want to see who can get the most uh, for this. So. So go get them. Go get them. That's first things first. Go get them. Um, Sunday will be the best time for me to be around for you guys to turn them in. Well, it's Mother's Day, actually, so that'll be kind of tough. Whatever. I will, I will have the people in my Discord soon with a little title for turning in. So remember, exclamation mark Discord, and you'll, you'll just have to... Uh, Send, send right there. I'll post this as well in the YouTube VOD below. Go to the Discord, my Discord. Find one of the people to turn it in and turn it in. Okay, um, that's how we gotta do this. So, so, anyways, that's just. I just want to see how many poison facets we can get together. All kinds, all kinds, any kinds, are okay. So the first things we want to do is we want to jump in and we want to just discuss racks with some basic rules. Bam! Racks. So you have your two racks. You have an armor rack, you have a weapon rack. They aren't always going to look exactly like that, I don't believe, right? I think the armor stands can look a little different and stuff. Um, but they're armor racks and they're weapon racks. So, the first things first. When you are clicking on a rack, your magic find doesn't matter. Okay, there are set rules for the spawns of that, which I don't believe is on this one. I think it's on the next slide. But there are set rules for when you get a unique, when you get a set, when you get a white, when you get... Right? All of that stuff is the, is the things... Um, whatever. So, your magic find is, is, is irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Second thing, ethereal items will spawn uh, at a 1 out of 20 rate. Um, the third thing is low quality items cannot drop. So you can't have low quality X. This means you're going to have a lot more normal and superior quality items because of that, right? Since you can't roll for low quality. Um, that's just a fun little fact. So it's a great place to search for whites and for sockets and things like that because you're not getting low quality stuff. So it does help you there. 30% uh, chance for sockets. This is the exact um, same that you would find. You know, that's your usual socket rate anyways. Uh, your eye level. For the item that's going to be dropped for the rack is equal to area level minus one. Okay. So if I have an area level of 80, let's say, the eye level of the item is going to be 79. And this is going to be determined 
or, or this is going to determine what kinds of items can drop from your rack, right? So when a rack is building its list of potential items that can be um, can be created from that rack, it's going to look there and it's going to try and decide which ones are possible and which ones are not, right? Uh, so if you're in, you know, Act 3 normal, you're not going to be able to drop from a rack a, um, let's say, Grim Shield or something, right? That's not going to be possible. But you will be able to drop that, uh, you know, if you're in Hell Act 3, okay? Um, yeah, and there's racks that will drop Threshers and stuff. However, a Great Thresher is going to have too high of a level and so, and this is the Q level of that, so you won't be able to ever drop great threshers from anywhere. But a thresher you could drop from a rack in Lower Cross. And number six is racks are tied to map seeds. Um, and this is, this seems to be very, very important. And I think there's a lot that, that lies under here as well. Um, what I mean by this is, First, it's just tied to a seed. If I come in and I look for a rack, such as, let's just go here really quickly, right? If I am here on this character, and I go, there is always an armor stand right here, okay? Always, 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 there's an armor stand right in this spot. That's every single time, and if I keep looking around, I can find a weapon rack somewhere. I don't know where my weapon rack is on this map. There you go, I've got a weapon rack. Okay. So always you're going to have, um, you're gonna be having that. Which chests are super chest? These ones, one, two, three. Wherever you have a fire pit, super chest, Super chest, super chest. That's it. But anyways, back to racks. So you go and you have your racks and you find your racks and whatever. And they're always going to be in the exact same spot. Just like those chests will be in the exact same spots. Just like everything like that. However, where a lot of it differs is... And, and this is maybe a little speculation, even. Um, racks are tied to a map seed. And it seems like rack drops are also tied to a map seed. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of things that can roll them to be very similar. So this is very interesting. So let's move on to the next slide. Boom. A couple other things we want to note. So the first thing, we want to go, we're a files kind of guy, right? We like the files. We want to dive into it. So you have your weapons.txt and you have your armors.txt files. These are going to be used whenever determining a rack, okay? So the first thing that you need to note is within that file, there is a rarity column and there is a bitfield one, technically bitfield one column. Okay. Under those columns, you're going to have anywhere from one to five and then one, three, five. Um, and this is exactly how it's going to look over, over uh, or on this screen, right? So here you can see ones are gonna be bows, crossbows, clubs, things of that nature. Fives are going to be orbs, staves, wands, but only like wooden wands. I think grim wands and bone wands are actually going to be threes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then crystal swords, dimensional blades, and phase blades. I don't know I put DM instead of whatever. Um, those are going to be fives as well. And then three is kind of everything else. Three seems to be a lot of metallic stuff. Um, and then in your armors, one is usually non-metallic and three is everything else. A lot of this, I believe, comes because of when you're trying to do things like cast iron golem, right? If I am a necromancer and I want to cast iron golem, let me come over here, whatever, okay. And give me the iron golem. And okay, so I want to cast iron golem. I can't do it on a wand, right? Wand is a no go. You cannot cast iron golem on a wand, that is not metallic. This is ethereal. And those booties. Can you not do it on ethereal items? Go over here. 
Let's get a... Uh, buy one of these. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why did nobody tell me? <laughs> nobody told me you can't see the screen. Okay, so I'll go over it again. Wand. I can't create an iron golem on it. Booties. Can't do it. Can do it on the buckler. Can do it on the short sword, right? Can't do it on the wand. Wand is a white item. Okay. So when you're going through and looking at all that stuff, blah, 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 whatever, right? There are certain items that you can. It has to be metallic, okay? And this comes down to, like I was saying, with that one or that three value, I believe it checks for that three value before it will then allow you um, to make your iron golem out of it. But wand is wooden, right, exactly. So, once again, if we go back to this, that is the bit field value, okay? The bit field value is that. Now, um, let's go back to the rarity really fast. Rarity is nothing to do with item rarity. Like, what's the drop chance? What's the? It is a rarity value purely for the sake of rarity on racks so this this value is a hundred percent put in here purely for armor and weapon racks and it's the way that it determines what sort of rarity it's going to be when dropping an item so an item that has a rarity of one is going to have a higher chance of dropping from a weapon rack than two than three than four than five and additionally whatever act you're in is also going to have an effect on what's dropping because the it's act and rarity have a combination, right? There's a formula using the act and rarity that will then determine what the chance is of that item being in the uh, racks droppable items, okay? So let's go over to our next slide. So once again, this goes to that top one, lower rarity value equals better percent chance of being in an item list for a rack. Other things to note, the act rack matters. We already went over that. Three and four are the drop chances. So a unique is a one in 400 chance. A set is a one in 160 chance of dropping. And I believe rare is like a one in 100. Magic is one in 80. Or no, no, no. Rare is one in 100. Magic is one in 80. Or is it one in 34? Yeah. One in 34 sounds more right. And then it's like one in 17 for a set, for a, uh, set or a, a set class specific item. So when I say, when, I, when you look at the left compared to the right, right side is class specifics, okay? Left side is all other items. So class specific items have a better drop chance to be unique, to be rare, to be magic, to be set, right? Then we go to the bottom. Racks themselves, they have, and this is where it's tied to the seed. First off, they seem to have a, a list of droppable items that it rolls for that rack, and I believe that rolls with the seed. This is something that I've kind of thought, okay? I think it rolls with the seed. So if I have a rack that is going to be rolling, um, you know, 10 items, 10 different items, it has that list preset. It's not going to drop any armor. Once it has its set items that it's choosing from, it's only really choosing from those items. Um, so if there's no enemy around that rack, when you go up to it, you're going to get a consistent item drop. And of course it depends, and it's something I, I guess not of course, it depends which way you approach it from and spawn the item. If there is an enemy near it, that same enemy generally has a consistent spawn for a specific item. Such as when I went and spawned that blade barrier, from that little eagle group, I believe it was, that happens a lot, okay? That eagle group will spawn that blade barrier quite often. And lastly, summons do have an effect on the item that drops right there. So, with that being said, I wanna kind of show you guys a little bit about this. And I might have to go let Golzar die so he doesn't interfere with our testing.
I'm sorry, Golzar. <laughs> sorry. I didn't want to do this to you. Um, can I kill him out here? Or is he going to own shop? All right, Golzar's too strong. Gosh dang it. Uh... Kill him. Gozar, you're too strong for your own good, man. There we go. Too strong for your own good. Okay, so. Now we can begin with a little bit of how this looks. So let's go up here and let's go and, and look at this uh, that we have right above us. Is this going to be... And without these monsters, usually this would be a grand crown or this far over... I would get a sexton trophy, something of that that nature. Okay, and there's the unraveler head. So I get a lot of heads from this. I get a lot of um, unraveler heads, and usually that comes from being over here, which those, once again, monsters entering will change how things are going to react. Okay, monsters entering will change how things are going to react. I get a lot of grim shields. I get a lot of unraveler heads. I get a lot of sexton trophies down here. I get a lot of grand crowns right in here. Um, I forget what I get above it. But we're going to kind of run through this a few times. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a note, right? So start writing things down. Or just noting in your head what's been dropping, right? Unraveler head drop there. Grand crown right here. Guaranteed. 100% guaranteed. Because if we bring up our rules, no enemy present equals consistent drop. Okay, right? Go down to that that bottom middle, no enemy present equals consistent drop. So I know if I come up in that exact way, I'm going to get that grand crown when there is no monsters present. Okay. Now let's try and go a little bit to the other side. And we've got a monster group. So monster groups are going to change it up. You'll still note that I'm going to be getting a lot of necro heads. It seems to have rolled, and this is something that I've that I that I notice is the the racks will draw from a similar set of items as well. Okay, so we're going to be drawing sexton trophies. We're going to be drawing uh, unraveler heads. We're going to be drawing mummified trophies when there's when there's monsters. If there's no monsters around, I'm not drawing it. So this right here, probably what grim shield, unraveler head. Okay, that's still in the unraveler head section. Maybe Grim Shield's a little bit further that way. Um, right? We are going to be seeing a lot of the exact same ones. And I can't always be 100% consistent on what's going to uh, be dropping the exact spot that I've approached from. But like I said, the approach has a huge factor. Another Unraveler head, right? Looks like those monsters were kind of still in that same area we were. I'm guessing that had some effect on it right there. Right, so I'm going to continue doing this. We're going to do this a few more times. See if we can approach from this side. Unraveler head, right? So we have hit the unraveler head side. If I would have done this exact thing and just come up right here, it would have been a grand crown. Literally the way that I approach this setup right here, the way that I approach this rack is going to alter what that rack has. And when you add in this boss group down here, like we saw last time with a boss group and that spawned in this exact spot, and I think it might have even been that boss group. It was that or eagles, I can't remember. You get blade barriers quite often. However, if there are no monsters present, I will never ever get a blade barrier from this rack right here. It is the approach. Okay, so now we've got monsters coming from all over and stuff. We've got a demon hide armor that drops from it. So it really is going to shift. And I want you guys to watch once again. We're going to do this a few more times and see when we have boss groups next to it, when we don't. 
Um, what sorts of things are we running into? Breastplate. Different boss group right there, right? Why, though? Why, though? It's not random drops. It is choosing from a pool of potential drops. And the way that you approach... And this isn't even the best rack to showcase. Grand Crown, right? There are no monsters around. Grand Crown right here. Unraveler head right over here. Okay. So if I had a rack that had literally zero monsters next to it, I could, I could sit there and spawn it to be the same thing 80% of the time. 80% of the time I could spawn to be the same thing. Where did I put that weapon rack? That was coming from a different path. Additionally, if there are multiple racks, if I have two armor racks, let's say there were two racks right next to each other that were armor racks there. If they would share the same drop table for their drops and the same way. So let's say that if I went up there and I clicked on it on one of the shrine, one of the racks, and it was going to drop a grand crown, right? Like it always does. That will always drop a grand crown. If I go up right next to it, there's no monsters. Let's say that the other one would then drop a breastplate. If I did the other rack first and then that rack, it would go grand crown breastplate. The first drop is always going to be a grand crown. The second drop is always going to be a breastplate. Now we've got the Grim Shield, which I've told you guys is one of the drops of this right here. And I'm assuming that due to my nature of going to that weapon shrine first, I'm now altering something within the map seed. And that is altering the drop that I'm going to get there. It's still pulling from the same sort of set. But... Okay, Unraveler Head. Broad Axe. If I want to like check out, I should do like one shrine at a time, honestly, if I want to check a shrine. Of the approach from the northeast. I mean, I'll go around here and I'll, I'll go to a different approach. We'll go... Go like this. See? Totally changes up everything. There were not monsters nearby there. But the way that I came in and approached this shrine adjusted what that shrine was going to drop. That would have been a grand, grand crown guaranteed if I did it just on the normal up, up, up. Right? Guaranteed that was going to be that. Approach does matter. Approach does matter. L monsters seed it as well. Monsters have a huge effect. But you, monsters, summons will also have an effect. I wish... I, ooh, I can summon a Hydra. Let's try that. Let's get to a one that's a guaranteed Grand Crown. That's not... It's probably a Blade Barrier, Round Shield. Pulling from the Shield section. Whenever I have the uh, monster groups right there. Seems to pull from a little more. Telekinesis have an effect. Um, I don't think so. Okay, that's a guaranteed Grand Crown. Now, if I do a Hydra, Sacred Targe. So, having some sort of summon in there. You do 10k runs of Unraki and tracking. I mean, I have done love testing as well. Blade Barrier. Boss group. Right? Show us another Grand Crown? Alright. Telekinesis does do damage. But not a ton. I mean, I can't show you guys another Grand Crown unless... There you go. I was going to say, unless there's no monsters around. If there's no monsters within that vicinity, I can show you guys a Grand Crown. Okay. And I can show you, I will never, ever roll a Grand Crown. Oops. 
from this side of it. And there's, since there's that boss group, we're going to get something like a sun spirit. There you go, right? Having the boss groups in there. There was one, though. That boss group was too far away. It's like within a certain range of the... Uh, Right? Unraveler head. This is my unraveler head section. Chests are different. Chests are not like racks. Can item, drax, item racks drop any item in the item level range? Yes. They should be able to drop any item that is within the specified range, right? So if we go back to our uh, sheet. Let me go to properties. That one. It should be able to drop anything, but the rarity is going to be way more difficult. So dropping like a phase blade, a crystal sword, a dimensional blade, so much harder to drop than dropping something else. So let's go over and I've got, I guess we have to do it this way. Let me add some text and see if this will work out okay. Well, that just didn't format at all. Um, how can I format this? Okay, that actually kind of works. Let me do this really fast. Save as to numbers PNG. All right, let me put numbers on. Properties. Ah, fresh meat. I get here and see racks on the screen. B-A-N-N-E-D. I know, I know. Thank you, Nick Squirt. Uh, don't save. Okay, so this right here um, is a look into weapons.txt. I've cut it down tremendously remember last time when we had the excel sheet and we're all over the place whatever i said all right i'm gonna cut it down a lot so this right here is a look into weapons.txt in a very small section of what i've grabbed okay very small section of what i've grabbed out so the first thing we have is we have um, a wand right wand short staff long staff like we said before those are going to be bit field five remember if we bring up that other sheet which I'll do really quickly, deal daily, Rex 2, boom, right? Orbs, staves, wands that are wooden, those are all going to be bit field five, okay? Um, <laughs> a little zero. <laughs> back to numbers, back to numbers. But when we look at the numbers, we have fives there. We have our... Uh, what is this long? Oh, bow. These are bows right here. A short bow and a long bow. These are going to be of type 1, which if we went and looked, bows, crossbows, clubs are going to be of type 1. Everything else is going to be of type 3. So we can see that we have the 5s up top, the 1s in the middle, the 3s down below there. And that is all in correlation as it should be with stuff. And this, once again, is to determine if it's metallic, non-metallic, whatever it is. Then we have the rarity value next to it. And I just have 2s and 1s right here, but they will go all the way up to 5s, like we see on a crystal sword. I guess I should have included a crystal sword on this graph, whatever. Um, but a crystal sword will have a rarity of 5, and it is going to be extremely difficult to find the crystal sword, right? Or dimensional blade, or phase blade, whatever, right? So that is all going to be a part of the determination of what can drop from a rack. And like I said before, when you start farming specific racks, you start getting the same items whenever you approach it from the same direction. And this is where it's not just like the guy who, who was in chat who was saying it's the monster spawns that affect it. That, that could have been a grand crown. Right? That's a grand crown from up here. If I approach from right here, it's an unraveler. I can do this all day to prove to you that which direction I approach from is going to have an effect on what is dropping from that rack. You want a new item to try and get to appear fre frequently? Sure. So let's come up here. 
Sacred Targe with that boss group right there. Hard with boss groups, right? Monsters have an effect. Monsters have an effect on these things. So it's difficult to note. Usually when I have a boss group though, I start rolling from regular shields. I'll find heaters, I'll find sacred targes, I'll find blade barriers. Blade barriers, if I'm right next to it usually. Uh, sacred targe if, targe if I'm further out. I need to get some no bosses here. I want to get the sexton trophy for you. Does that have to do with time spent in the area? No. I have played around with time spent. Gosh dang it. We need to get these bosses away. And this is once again where monster spawns do have that effect on it. Right? Monster spawns have that effect. Um, there's nothing you can do about that. And we just keep spawning monsters right now. So that, as you can see, though, this is a great way to show how much monsters can have that effect, right? And how we're seeing monster spawns spawning a lot of armors, physical armors, shrouds, breastplates, and shields that are uh, targes and blade barriers, things of that nature. And then when we're finding on our own, we're getting helms. There you go, Sexton Trophy. Told you I could get it. Right. So this is my Sexton Trophy spot. Am I a programmer? Yeah. This is my Sexton Trophy spot. If I am very, very much on that edge there, I will spawn a Sexton Trophy in that spot. Okay? So I can spawn whatever I want to spawn with the, of course issue of if there is something there that I can't handle. You know. If there's monsters right next to it, that is going to automatically change what's going on in the seed and change how the drops are going to be dropping. Right. So you're, we're getting weird things, vampire fang belts now, right? You get all sorts of stuff that will really, um, am I late with all the tutorials 17 years later? No. Can I make a drop of Burun? Can't, can't do that for you, sorry. Minion skull. That's an interesting one actually. I was not expecting a minion skull from right there. I was trying to come at it from a slightly different angle. There's a grim shield drop spot, drop spot. Um, that I think is over there. Maybe it's more straight up and just under it. Maybe it's more straight up and just under. Uh, that's the Unraveler head. I don't know where the Grimshield spawn is exactly. I feel like it's right at... There's a very small corner. There's a very small corner. Like right here. Yeah. Monsters over there. But when we have those monsters spawning up there, we seem to be getting that vampire fang belt a few times, right? Never ever will you see a vampire fang belt from that again unless you have that exact area like that. So now it's just gonna be whatever. <laughs> Mom fight trophy. Is it faster if you tell you to go back to Act 4 than save quit? Mm, it'd be pretty close. Okay, sure. So. Yeah. Can't do anything when you got birdies. Can't do anything when you got monsters. So we were trying to spawn it without monsters. And this is, once again, if you can get racks that are in rooms that don't spawn bosses. You're going to be in a lot better spot. Vampire Fang Belt again. Again, right? We saw that exact same thing right there. So that's three times in a row now that them being in that spot has dropped us that Vampire Fang belt. Oh my 
gosh. Killing me. Does your merch have something to do with it as well? I don't believe so. Summons do. Like I said, if I come and I drop a Hydra right there. Now I've suddenly altered it. That's a grand crown. Every single time I have shown you, that is a grand crown. I suddenly drop a summon, I get a Luna, which is a completely different item, right? What did we see when we had monster spawns? We had blade barriers, we had sacred targes, we had shields that were non-class specific shield drops. Now I can come up here, drop a summon, and then I'm going to start be pulling from that shield section as opposed to pulling from the head section or pulling from the grand crown right there or the uh, whatever. But then if there's like bosses that are up in this area, we're starting to see vampire fang belts, right? So you can get a pretty accurate prediction of what you are going to be finding when you get to a uh, when you get to a wreck. And once again, we can go to our classic Grand Crown, right? I can always come back and prove to you. If you ever start doubting in your mind, oh no, I don't think Grand Crown, because I am in this approach to this stand right here as opposed to Sexton Trophy, Unraveler Head, right? You can see all of this stuff by how you approach. And once again, this is whenever you want to, um, this is only applicable for a single player. Yeah, because you're re-rolling the same map, right? It's only going to be, I mean, it's not specific, but specific in that you'll never be able to really re-roll again on Battle.net because you're getting different seeds, right? So let's see if we can do something with this weapon rack. Okay, we got the Martel. Do you read the code? I do read the code. So I do a lot of looking into it. This stuff, there wasn't as much in the code. Martel defer. If you have monsters nearby and kill them first, does it change it back to Grand Crown? No. Once a monster or something has approached next to this rack, it sets what's going to happen, or it changes something in the map seed that's going to adjust it, okay? Gladius with monsters. It's not source code though. It's all the TXT files that everything is pulling from. So that's what I'm looking into. I'm looking at all of the, the armors, the item types, the uniques, the weapons, the shrines, whatever. There's all of these TXT files that it goes and pulls from to do all of its roles and everything. Um, and you can, you can look into that to get a, a better understanding. And now we have some tree lurker dudes and stuff in there. That's going to change it to that poignard, right? But if we can get it to be open again, we can go there and we can drop this. And let's see if I, if we can even Martel defer, right? Bam. Change it up a little bit. Change it up a little bit. And I'm wondering if that Martel defer had an effect there. Because I know if you pop one, you generally pop the others right after. That has an effect. It's things that will like change the map seed. Right? Now all of a sudden, this is a grand crown. And you and right there it's still grand crown. Now it's a fetish trophy. Because we've gone and, and adjusted and done other things that are now changing the map seed essentially. So last time, let's see. Perfect. So I'm going to spawn a Hydra. It looks like minions, and I've and I've done this a little bit before. Adding minions really, really changes it in weird ways. Not in predictable ways. All the time. Sometimes have you can have that consistent, like the blade barrier from that, whatever, but I'm not going to always be able to get that sacred charge with that. Your best way is to purely 
Grand Crown it, right? Your best way is to just get there, not have monsters, and get your Grand Crown. So, you can farm certain sets of uniques. Okay, great. Well, how about farming uh, Caduceus? I wish. I would 100% do it. A Hydra Bow. I would 100% do it. But remember, due to our first image, which let me go in. Ba -ba -ba, doo -doo -doo. Due to our first image, I level equals A level minus one. And I will show this to you right now. The area level is 80. The item level is 79. Right? Area level is 80. Item level is 79. So you can't ever spawn anything that has a Q level of 85 or higher. Right? You can't ever spawn that. And you, you can see item levels with this mod. That's why you can see it here. Um, so the highest one, I believe there's racks in I level 84 areas. Or A level 84s. So I think A level I level 83 is the highest that you can get. Unless there's some racks in some 85 areas, potentially. Uh, yeah, because the mausoleum. Mausoleum's 85. So you can get up to I level 84 or Q level 84 when you're looking at there, right? So if I go over here to the mausoleum. I'm going to have racks in here. So these racks, there's one there and there's one. Uh, where is it? Here. Thresher. Hey. Now there were a couple monsters right there. There were a couple monsters. But we know that this rack has that Thresher drop potential. Also, you'll note there's an Alpha Helm here. We never saw an Alpha Helm anywhere in that last one that we farmed. Pit is also I level 85. If it has racks in it, you can do the same thing. But there's no racks there, yeah. So that is a potential Thresher rack. Like I say, there were there were a couple of monsters right there though, which is worrisome. That's a little worrisome. Cutlass Dusk Shroud. And you're often gonna have monsters in this area. Right. So you wanna find something in your tower or something wherever it is um you're at a potential dust shroud rack here as well yeah i mean that right there is solid that right there is solid now you can you can run for three open socket perfect ap you know 15 percent or not ap dust shrouds you can go for some Threshers. Grim Helm is also on this rack. That is a lot of very nice rackage right there that we're finding. Oh yeah, and how you pop them also has an effect. That's right. If you go um, one, then the other. And this is a very difficult one to approach in a solid way. Uh... But we'll try and see if we can approach in the same way here. And then pop it in the same way as well. Yeah, I don't like that pop. Okay, let's go back to the, where we went to the middle. Popped weapon first, popped the one on the left after. Though there might have been a monster there. And we've had monster spawns on each one of these so far. So we've yet to have just a clean opening to kind of get the, what what is the base? Right. We've yet to really get our, our clean opening, what is the base? If I approach this way, yeah. Boss spawn. These aren't very good racks for approaching, unfortunately. Um, 
You can you can really reset these till you get the best racks. But Dusk Shroud, Thresher, Grimhelm, Corn I mean there's some there's some solid Alpha Helm, whatever. There's some solid things that are dropping from these racks. Right in here. Ancient armor dropping too? Dang. Okay, so I see no monsters here. We got double axe, ancient armor. On a no monster from that bottom. Highest armor base you can farm using this method. Uh, what's an armor base with Q level 84? Let me let me go look really fast. And ITC. Uh, Dracul's Grasp, it looks like. And Archon Plate, Bone Visage, Great Poleaxe for weapon, Ward. Uh, yeah. And I can farm a uh if i go back back diadem is q level 85 dang i can farm akira's though if i wanted i could farm akira's dusk was unracked first was it did i do it backwards ah crap no, you can't go in here. Well, you can, but it requires a mod that's banned by Blizzard. Called multi -res. Dang it. Dang monsters. In these are screwing up these racks. It's making it really tough to farm them consistently. Making it really tough. So, those aren't very good consistent ones right there. But, where a lot of people... Um, we'll find consistent is one in your lower cursed, like I said, when you are farming in specific manners. Okay. You bought a pike rack. Uh, and then additionally, a lot of people do it in their durance, right? So they do kind of the same thing. They come up here, they kill Mephisto, they come over, and they do that, right? Something like that. Scythe. Tower level one is okay as well. I'm trying to think if I have any good um, racks in my tower level one. I know I've got some down in my level five. Right down there is one. Throwing axe. That's right. That is a throwing axe one. I probably could have told you that, actually. Level three. This one is... Ah, uh, there was a monster there. And level five. Monsters ruin it. Weapon armor. A high level throwing X. So the other thing, and this is something that's really important to note. This is one of the best ways to farm a TC3 item. Okay. Now you might say TC3, Mr. Llama, that seems like a stupid thing. Why would you want to farm a TC3 item? Well, the reason you might want to farm one is for early stuff, right? Maybe you want to get that uh, gold dagger or something like that, whatever it is. These are very, very tough to find, okay? A lot of TC3 items are just difficult to find. Uh, Blink Bat's form comes from leather armor, which is a TC3, right? These racks don't seem to have a preference, really, in one way or the other. So it's so like, in hell, if I'm killing a monster, the chance of getting a TC3 from that monster is terrible, okay? 
like that's it just doesn't happen very often so my chances of getting a gold dagger in hell are going to be extremely extremely low throwing axe again right once again we're getting the same drop because there's no monsters near it tc3 this is treasure class once again this is pro thursdays i'm assuming you have knowledge of treasure classes and all that stuff i will do a video on all of those things though at some point um monsters change spawns so you can either go and do cold crow a bunch and things like that if you want to be a normal doing all that stuff or you can find yourself a rack that's going to be dropping items like that right you can find yourself a rack that is dropping it because it's not doing it based on these crazy magic find rolling odds where it's like yeah we're just you know a monster in hell is really going to drop it. It's kind of like Bale's chance to drop a minor healing potion is like as good as or worse than his chance to drop a uh, Tyrael's Might, right? They've just, how they've set it up is so that you're not always dropping that garbage. Racks don't seem to be that way. Racks seem to be very much picking from its list with a pretty even distribution of TCs and then it just comes down to what's that rarity of the item kind of, um, and then it chooses from there. So a lot of times you can get something like a throwing axe, which has a very low TC. I mean, what is throwing axe here? Throwing axe is a TC seven. Q level of seven right there. And it's a TC nine, excuse me. TC nine, Q level seven. Not a very uh, crazier item, but we can we but it's spawned on our rack, right? And you can get those spawns like that, and that can be very easy um, to do all of that. So it is extremely interesting. And once again, I can come around here and kill things. I can go back over here, blah 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 blah, and I can still spawn my grand crown because none of that stuff matters. Popping that would have mattered. Popping that would have mattered. Popping rack seems to have an effect. Um, yeah, finding a TC9 twice in a row is astronomically low. So that right there, that I could find a TC9 twice in a row off that, off that rack. And I have found it plenty more times, I promise you. Because when I went and found that rack at first, and I was farming that rack, I was farming it to try and spawn throwing axes. And now we have a monster group, and it changes. Yep. You have a theory that's affected within 10 game yards? I think that is almost true, with the exception of if you do something like pop a rack. Like I say, I, I think if you do something like pop a rack... Maybe you're right. Maybe you are correct. We got our grand crown. And that's something that, once again, we don't have 100% facts on this. We don't have 100% knowledge on these because there's RNG, uh, a lot of RNG stuff mixed into it. And a lot of stuff that we don't have exact knowledge on how exactly it's working. But, dang monsters. But we, we do have a lot of experience, a lot of trials. Try the same without leaving the area and coming back. I didn't leave the area right there. I just went back to the, that spawn so I could approach from the same direction. Right? We do have knowledge that says... Sexton Trophy. And and it gets... I mean, it gets weird in how you approach. Because a lot of times when I want a Sexton Trophy, I'm right here. When I want a Grand Crown, I'm up in here. All the way up to like here, I usually get a Grand Crown. Over here, I'm going to get an Unraveler Head. So it's potential that Sexton Trophy is rolling in some sort of sliver like this for this approaching angle. It's weird. It's weird. That's all I can tell you. If you kill the monsters, take the waypoint and return with no monsters. At that point, I believe it has already had its effect. But we can go try it. Like I, We can go show. Right? There's monsters right there, so this would not be a grand crown. Alright, I can't kill birds if they're in the air. Let's 
kill these guys. Right. We'll go go away. Come back. That would be a grand crown, guaranteed. But it's a sacred torch. And a lot of that had to do with the monster spawn. And we don't really see sacred charges when monsters are spawning down here. We see sacred charges when monsters are spawning up here. Vampire fang belts. Blade barriers. Right. Do you know how drop rate calculators work? Where are they pulling their data from? That is very different than uh, the way that maps or that racks are being rolled especially because they have this weird like i say how the seed is slightly changing i think racks were meant to be kind of random but i don't think blizzard did enough to set it up to be random so that would be a grand crown but we're going to change our position on it and draw a sexton trophy right trying to get a spawn from above and and see how that kind of rolls Rip that sacred charge, 45 all res. Sorry. Grim shield. Maybe our Grim shield spawn is up above there. You know, that's, I, I haven't tested every single approach angle on this rack, but I've tested a few and I can spawn sex and trophies. I can spawn grand crowns and I can spawn Um, unraveler heads right so you can find racks that have that sort of reliability and once again there is a pretty limited list of items that this rack is dropping and i believe that comes tied to the seed as well so this is never going to be dropping that uh this is an armor shrine notice i haven't dropped an ancient armor a dusk shroud a anything of that nature right i haven't dropped anything of that nature um our cold plants or mausoleum any of the items that you're seeing on the shrine down here they don't share at all right all the items that we see down here on this shrine which way did i do it weapon armor and we got the ancient armor and you said if i went this way first it was Dusk Shroud, and I forget what the weapon was. But there's our double axe ancient armor spawn. Armor Act first right there would have gotten Dusk Shroud, I believe. Thresher was when there were two zombies on the right side, so Thresher seemed unreliable in that sense. There were two zombies near it, so I don't think we can spawn a thresher. I don't think it's a reliable thresher spawn. And I believe there were also monsters for Dusk Shroud, but I'm not 100% certain. Or I was further right this way. So, it's very... Um, I had also unracked other stuff in the rest of the floor before the thresher. Crap. Yeah, that would be really difficult then. That would be really difficult. Yeah, there were two zombies for the dust shroud. Maybe. So, like I say, this is a tough... Tough one to uh, to spawn how I want to spawn it, just from the way I have to approach and all the monster potential. But same thing goes for the same points and everything. Um, no, because like I said, there were some monsters in there. Uh, th that's irrelevant, right? That's irrelevant. The point is, we can get back to the point now because we've kind of gone around and, and show all that stuff, whatever. Racks are tied to your map seeds there. We haven't seen a set drop yet. We have seen a rare drop, which, like I said, is one in a hundred, I believe, for that rare drop to, to happen. Um, 
So, you know, we've probably popped close to that number, so that seems to be lining up with it. Uh, but this bottom stuff, racks themselves. No enemies present. Consistent. Same enemy present in same area also seems to be pretty consistent, right? Getting that blade barrier. Getting that vampire fang belt when we had that pack of whatever dudes up in that right area. Um, sacred targes, it seemed like, if there was a monster group above, happened a few times. Whatever it is, we can see a lot of that stuff. And, like I said before, the TC choices aren't... Um, the TC choices aren't going to be in this way that is... And I want to go get a throwing axe one more time to really prove it. Really prove it. This is a TC9 in hell. TC9s in hell do not spawn. Throwing axe. Right? We can get this throwing axe over and over and over and over and over again. This is not a common hell drop. But you're going to find it to be very common here. And it's going to be all the time from this one. Because it's going to be um, choosing from that list. And it doesn't choose it like it chooses magic find and item drops for monsters. It chooses how it chooses for... Eye level is 7 for a throwing axe. Or, I mean, the eye level it's going to show is going to be 84 or 74. Wait, 74? What? That's weird. Whatever. I don't know why that's 74. Uh, oh, we're in the tower. I thought I was in the mausoleum. We're in the tower. 74. Thank you. That was confusing me. But the Q level of the item is 7. The area level of the tower cellar level 1 is 75. Okay? So, this is also a great way to get a Shaco. That's right. If you can find a rack that drops Shakos... So you can literally reset maps until you start running. So like that Grand Crown, right? That is my easiest... That Grand Crown and that Throwing Axe are my easiest spawns. And or Unraveler Heads. Okay? Those are my easiest spawns. Okay? Those are my easiest spawns in this game. So, sometimes that will be a unique Grand Crown. Sometimes that will be a unique throwing axe or a set grand crown. Just doing this for testing purposes, I have found three set grand crowns, which, as we said before, have a 1 in 240 chance, 1 in 160 chance, 1 in 160 chance of being a set. So I have found a couple of them. Right? I have found a couple of them. Um... How do you reset the map? Just change your difficulty or play multiplayer. Either one, right? So I know that I can spawn throwing axes, Martel defers. Um, and, you know, once again, it depends what area I go into. Grand crowns, unraveler heads, sexton trophies, whatever, right? Ooh, cryptic axe. Hey, oh, that's cool. There was that monster right there, though, so that adjusted that spawn. Other good places for racks. Um, a lot of the, like, celery places have them. Towers can be pretty good. Um, the mausoleum, you can, you can spawn some really nice ones. Right? There's my Martel. Okay? No monsters. We're in a range of effect. Not celery, like cellar. Cell cellar. Do you have any items left that can be farmed this way? <sighs> Maybe Schaefer's hammer? Let me see. Q level 83. I could I could farm a Schaefer's hammer this way. If I could find a legendary mallet. Um so I would need to be in an 84 or 85 area. You found a poison facet? Nice. I would need to be in a 45, 44 or 45 area. Wrist spike. This is a Martel de Fur from right here. A wrist spike from this angle. Sorry, E Train. I need eight items left. I think that's the only one that I can spawn from this here. That's not how it works, Scruzar. 
Unique plus three applies to monsters, not applies to this. Eh. Monsters affecting it. So I, I'd love to see what else I can get on this weapons rack right here. Maybe we can get a legendary mallet approaching from like the top left or the bottom right. Martel. Let's see. <laughs> Only source can farm racks. No, anybody can farm racks like this. At Nex. Oh yeah, I can't even find a... That's right, this is 79. So I can't find a legendary mat here. I would really be like Mausoleum. If River of Flame has any good racks, I could go farm there. Um, can it have racks or does it have chest? I know it has chest, but does it have racks? Whatever it is. So wherever the racks are, I would have to go find an I level 84 or A level 84 or 85 area. Um, farm that for weapon racks. When I got a weapon rack, farm it until it has legendary mallets as the consistent drop or one of the consistent drops and then farm it about 400 times and I would get a unique and then stone crusher is 20% of or 80% of the time if not a little more so I'd probably have to farm it like 2,000 times to uh to get a Schaefer's hammer from it which honestly probably could be faster than just getting a uh, Schaefer's hammer if we're gonna be honest, um, probably could be faster than just than just that. Do thunder malls drop from Rex? So if you want to know uh, that, which it, it should not, because a thunder mall is a TC eighty seven. Um, but if you want to know what item it is, just go look up TC list and look for what the Q levels are. Um, of the items right so like here's a good one this is an easy list that i like to use this has all of the and you'll note that the q level of items is different when they're in their set form uh so for instance if you go to griswolds right you'll note that griswolds redemption valor griswolds honor which is a is is a tc 87 is a Q level 44. And you're like, oh, so you can drop it. You can drop the cat. No, you can't drop it. And once again, the reason you can't is because it's first checking if the base can drop. Can a cat see us drop? No, it won't add it to the list that the rack can have. Okay. And I can, do I have a window capture going on that? I do. So let me. Do something like this real fast. Right? Boom. So, can we just take a quick look there? This is the TC87 list. Archon Staff is a Q level 85. Mang Song is a Q level 86. Right? So sometimes you could have the base drop, but maybe that base can't roll unique. Um, but here you can see Griswold's honor is a Q level 44 because all set items have the same Q level. Um, but you're not going to be able to find uh, Griswold's honor because you still have to roll the base item first. So it's very, very interesting. Um, and then, like I said, there's still some data out there. There's still a lot of like questions out there that I have that we all have. Is there a way to, you know, whatever, um, RNG manipulate it a little more kind of, um, it's tough. It's really tough to say, really tough to say. Where are the racks in here? No Rex. Oh 
god, there's so much stuff on these racks. Demon hide armor. So much stuff on these racks. So a, a ver an easy one or a good one to shop for is a gilded shield rack as well. You can find that uh, next to Mephisto even, I believe. So a lot of people like to go and farm the Mephisto one until they get um, that that area dropping or gilded shields, and then that can be a great place to get your haws, right? But yeah, if you can find an area that has not a lot of monster spawns, that's going to be your best bet. That's going to be your best bet. Because if you're constantly spawning monsters all over it, all around it, you're going to be pretty, have a difficult time getting any reliability out of it. Sorry. There you go. Right. It's going to be tough to get reliability from it. How's it going, G? It's me. Eh. Whatever. So, um, with that, I think that kind of covers Rax as a whole. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's go back to face. That That's kind of Diablo Daily Pro Thursday racks. There's a lot of cool things about it. There's a lot of really interesting, intricate details. The way that you spawn it, the way that you're approaching it, what's spawning around it, the way that you're interacting with racks. And that's something I didn't get to show because I don't have a 